When asked what are the largest, heaviest, and indeed the once most difficult stones to ever have been cut, transported to, and precisely placed within the great structures of the Giza Plateau, we would have previously stated that the granite ceiling blocks found within the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid were the largest known, with some of these stones weighing as much as 100 tons. However, it turns out that there exist many other stones upon this mysteriously created plateau, which far exceed the pyramid's inner megaliths. Unsurprisingly, these discoveries are rarely shared academically, or indeed to the many people who pay to visit the Giza Plateau each year. The Valley Temple is but one example of these other, less mentioned, marvelously enormous stones, eight of which are still present within the structure's ruin the largest of which still being roughly 3 by 3 by 6 meters in size. Furthermore, the same similarly sized stones can also be found within the Kefren Pyramid Causeway Temple. The structure is also rarely discussed or shared by Egyptologists or archaeologists alike. It seems that academics who fear a loss of funding from particular bodies tend to merely ignore that which they are confronted with which they simply cannot explain. Again, the same enigmatic megalithic blocks can be found in the causeway temple of the Miserinus Pyramid. One finds the same highly eroded, thus extremely ancient stones. It seems that these huge stones seemingly litter the Giza complex, and amazingly, they are successfully ignored merely due to their controversy. Yet, the largest to be found anywhere upon this man-made plateau are to be found hidden in plain sight. Overlooked for many millennia, the still remaining foundation stones, upon which much of the east side of the Kefren Pyramid once stood, were not lifted into place, but were indeed transported to this location and precisely placed into position. These stones are so massive and so perfectly dropped into the surrounding landscape that thousands of people have walked right over them every year without ever realizing what they were standing on. Although the true depth and thus complete scale of the block is currently unknown, if it is of a cubic shape, it would appear to be roughly three-quarters the weight of the pregnant woman of Baalbek. She weighs around 1,001 tons, which would make our foundation stone anywhere from 500 to 750 tons in weight. Clearly, a controversial yet incredible discovery, one which takes our understandings of the sheer undertaking that was Giza, are still at an early stage. Nonetheless, such discoveries move us one step closer towards finally understanding just who could have built the Great Pyramid Complex of Egypt. We recently covered the impressive ancient dwellings known as dolmens, which can be found littering most of the European countryside. Enormous ancient structures, which we feel were left by a surviving, less capable branch of an earlier civilization, still possessing advanced knowledge allowing them to build with such stones. Surviving remnants of the group, we also believe, were responsible for the masterfully constructed ancient ruins which can be found upon the same continents. Additionally, this era within human history was the inspiration for an animated TV show, namely the Flintstones. Curiously, the Flintstones, dubbed the Modern Stone Age Family, could easily be mistaken for a lost advanced civilization. Did the makers of the Flintstones know something we are currently unraveling regarding the builders of the Flintstones' homes, namely the dolmens? Or is it all a mere coincidence? Some of these dolmens still possess as yet unexplained evidence which flies in the face of academics worldwide. Sites such as the Dolmen of Menga, found near Malaga in Spain. This massive dolmen, one of the largest megalithic sites in Europe, is a prime example of the unexplained features which defy current explanation. The dolmen is 902 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 115 feet in height. It was built with 32 megaliths, the largest of which weighing over 200 tons. Nearby is another impressive dolmen, known as Devira, 
discovered between 1903 and 1905 by brothers Antonio and José Vieira of Antiquera. This site also possesses some of the most impressive megaliths to be found in any dolmens anywhere in Europe. Who built these incredible structures? How did they build them? La roche -Fille, in the French department of ille vilaine in the Brittany region, was named after a legend claiming that the stones were brought by fairies, this clearly inspired by their inexplicable nature. A name of fairy rock was given to many French dolmens or covered walkways. Regardless of whether our own theory is correct, the still surviving features of many of these ancient dolmens is clearly in direct contradiction with attested theory. Further alternative study is desperately needed of structures we find highly compelling. The Treasury of Atreus, also known as the Tomb of Agamemnon, is an astonishing ancient structure found on the Paganitsa Hill, Mycena, Greece, which, according to academia, dates back a mere 3,000 years. However, the supposed accomplishments of its bronze-wielding builders is predictably yet to be explained by those who have supposedly accurately dated the structure. Undoubtedly, the most compelling and thus contradictory feature of this build is the lintel. Along with other lesser-known megalithic blocks, which still litter the site, the structure's lintel found within the build is currently known to be the biggest ancient stone lintel in the world. This weight-bearing block, which bridges the door's opening, is still, regardless of clear erosion, an incredible 120 metric tons. An inconceivable weight for our ancestors placed a mere century ago, let alone our well-studied Bronze Age descendants, who are supposed to have been responsible for the quarrying and transportation of this ashlar stone and then setting this enormous stone aloft more than two meters, perfectly placing it atop the structure's main opening. With an interior height of 13.5 meters and a diameter of 14.5 meters, it was the tallest and widest dome in the world for over a thousand years. The precision involved in the placement of these enormous stones once made the interior of the build appear polished smooth. Furthermore, Above its astonishing lintel is another intriguing design feature in the shape of a pyramid, also used within modern-day rafters of house roofs. This opening was incorporated specifically to channel excess weight away from the lintel. This design feature was realized as essential for structural integrity and was included to prevent the building from collapsing over time. This addition, we feel, could only have been made by members of a civilization who clearly had advanced technical knowledge of load-bearing architectural design, and as such, is indicative of techniques far too advanced for that of our Bronze Age ancestors. This space, which is known as a relieving triangle, is meant to funnel the weight of the structure off the lintel and into the sides, preventing the lintel from cracking due to pressure. Furthermore, there have also long been rumors surrounding the site that it was originally found to have had an interior decorated with pure gold. Do these features sound like the work of our well-studied developing ancestors? Or perhaps, surviving work left by an accomplished group who were once part of an advanced, technologically capable civilization? We believe that the evidence found at the structure is simply unexplainable when attributed to a primitive people. As such, it is highly likely that the currently attested opinions in regards to its construction are inaccurate and seemingly conspiratorial. How did an ancient people incorporate such enormous stone blocks into their long-lasting precision builds without the involvement of advanced weightlifting technologies? How can certain fields of authoritative study expect critical thinking individuals to believe a purveyed account for the origins of such inexplicable ancient sites, and indeed the civilizations responsible, being that of a group just beginning to understand the science of producing smelted bronze. How were they capable of such precision with such gigantic weight-bearing architecture? 
It is, understandably, a highly controversial ruin, which is clearly highly compelling. There are many astonishing ancient structures located within India, arguably some of the most intricately detailed structures to be found anywhere on Earth. We have, in the past, covered a number of these structures, not only due to the astonishing detail displayed upon their stonework, but also many other compelling enigmatic details that, to this day, remain unexplained. A personal recommendation for an alternative archaeological researcher of Indian ruins is Praveen Mohan over at Phenomenal Travel Videos. Yet, due to the countless ancient anomalies that can be found within India, we rarely step on each other's proverbial feet. For example, during my own personal research, I have not only found that many of the hillside temples, seemingly hewn from the bedrock of Earth, would even to this day be incredibly difficult to replicate, if not impossible. With some of the most astonishing, not only attached to religious belief and historical rumor to a mountain in the Himalayas, a factor we have also previously covered, with my personal observations, regardless of the fact that many locals pertain to it being an ancient pyramid, discovered noticeable evidence of the entire base of the mountain, once having been hewn into an artificial crescent. Also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone, slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone. End quote. With the stone quarried out to create the astonishing temples, an accepted artistic masterpiece, just like Yongyu Cave in China, have never been found. Additionally, during my own pursuit for clues as to how, and indeed who, could have created such temples, I have identified signature tool marks in several areas that match that of many other ancient ruins, indeed such as Yangshan Quarry, also in China. Providing strong evidence that Whoever was responsible for these ruins may have indeed been the same civilization, or, as our Atlantean videos have postulated, were commanded to be constructed by a dominant civilization, sharing such technologies with the native populations, employing them to create such wonders. Thus, this would also explain the matching signatures of advanced stone-cutting tool marks found on different continents. Like our research into the variation into ancient stone clamps, a method that was undeniably shared throughout the globe, yet the methods of creating such clamps and the resulting metallurgy varies from continent to continent. As we have previously stated on many occasions, whoever was responsible for these incredible ancient sites seemingly vanished at some point within antiquity, leaving many ancient quarries and temples unfinished. One of the temples that we used to link the tool marks with other sites around the world, Vetivan Coil. One of the precious, abandoned sites that like so many other ancient advanced ruins that were being built around the world, vitally shows the rough stone-cutting signatures left by an advanced machinery that was once responsible for their initial cutting, this before the refinement of such structures' carvings. With many other sites in India, that due to their geographical positioning, and thus protection from erosion, still possesses these same signature tool marks. However, the purpose of today's video is probably one of the most peculiar anomalies in India, and could be perceived by some as one of the most compelling pieces of evidence of advanced ancient machinery having once been responsible for these ancient structures. Known as the Tanjore Brihadiswarar Temple, which was supposedly constructed by the Cholas. However, the temple possesses a characteristic which was not only out of the capabilities of the Cholas dynasty, but to me, is compelling proof of a pre-Diluvian civilization having been responsible for its construction. As atop the temple, at a height of 216 feet above ground level, is a solid lump of granite carved with perfection 
yet has been realized at an astonishing weight of 80 tons. To put that in perspective, according to academia, an ancient culture with no advanced technologies, especially lifting technologies, a dynasty well studied and explored by modern academia. The heartland of the Cholas was the fertile valley of the Kaveri River. Although their power was considerable, and was probably complemented by such claimed of astonishing feats of architecture, regardless, the question remains, how did this civilization raise such an enormous stone? It seems to us that such claims were merely made to impress their enemies and allies, and the fact that academia is severely lacking any explanation as to how such a feat was accomplished strongly supports my suspicion that the temple is, in fact, an antediluvian ruin, and as such, highly compelling. One of the things crucial for any civilization to flourish is a steady and abundant supply of clean, fresh water. It is the lifeblood of our planet, arguably the most fought-over resource on Earth. Without it, crops fail, sewage is not effectively flushed away, and a lack of it will cause dehydration and death in an incredibly short space of time, depending on where one were to find themselves. Thus, for our posit of ancient, advanced civilizations, with populations well into the millions, to hold any water, a civilization we believe continues to bestow upon us advanced knowledge, ingenious solutions to the most difficult of problems such as water manipulation and the irrigation thereof would be present. The management and general manipulation of water should in all accounts be present amongst these sites in which we claim to be the work of now lost civilizations, and that is indeed what one finds. There is endless discussion within peer-reviewed papers and academic circles by regurgitation, seemingly lacking the faculty for critical thinking as they continue to look upon these ingenious ancient solutions for getting water to places that it should simply not be as simply wonderful, all incapable of considering that these people who created these structures, although they did not build skyscrapers, may not have been of a primitive nature with far less capable tools than modern man, this again, I might add, a denial continued when one looks upon the size of megalithic blocks moved through these lost ages of antiquity. Yet I digress. The following ancient water technique is nothing short of astonishing, and the work that must have gone into its construction unimaginable. Not surprisingly, it is an ancient marvel that did not escape the attention of William R. Corliss. Known as Kanats, they are literal underground ancient man-made rivers, built slightly underground for the purposes of shade from the searing sun, found in most of the locations you find the Kanats. This of course also minimized evaporation considerably inevitably allowing the water to travel unimaginably further into dry and inhospitable locations. These ancient man-made oases, yet another example of not only ancient man's abilities, knowledge, and dedication to overcome obstacles, but also a clue as to how many people these, what we believe are now lost civilizations who abruptly vanished, housed at an unknown time in history. For such enormous volumes of water are only needed for an equally enormous population, possibly once located somewhere nature wouldn't have allowed, yet with their advanced knowledge of irrigation systems, they flourished within. Kanats are yet another incredible remnant left by an advanced civilization, which we undoubtedly find incredibly compelling. We are often confronted with peculiar, seemingly impossible artifacts that will, after some in-depth investigation, leave one with more questions than answers. This, either due to their enormous, often seemingly impossible sizes, megaliths in some locations weighing far over 1,000 tons, somehow, once used in their construction, sometimes set aloft, proof that not only were these stones hewn but moved and lifted seemingly with ease. But also, alas, the lack of public exposure many said sites are granted, often minimal at best, thus countless examples of advanced ancient technology remain still hidden here upon our planet, 
As a consequence, many have avoided scrutiny. Details therein which are clearly of a controversial nature are conveniently absent any funded studies of said ruins. We feel ruins of great importance, but due to the strength of evidence one can surmount, in support of past, once highly advanced ancient civilizations at said locations, they are largely overlooked and actively avoided by funded archaeologists, academics, and historians alike en masse. Simply ignored, thus preventing all from what we feel is a birthright, an accurate, warts and all, transparent exploration of the origins of humanity and, in turn, the history of our planet. Allowing one and all to make up their own minds in regard to the origin of said sites, no matter how controversial. This is the exact reason for the channel's creation, and is the driving force behind the six books one intends to write. A revolutionary cataloging of once, yet no more, deliberately overlooked or academically dismissed sites, dotted all over the world. For when one explores our content, they will be made aware of a smorgasbord of unique and often inexplicable features which can be found all over Earth. In addition, it is not just the visible feats of ancient stoneworking that are the singular astonishing legacy left by a now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilization. For there are many other feats accomplished in a bygone era. Prehistoric mine shafts can still be found in many areas of Earth. Not only are there still existing, seemingly machine-cut, extremely ancient, incredibly deep mine shafts in a number of areas of Earth, including those featured found within Tel Aviv, are all but one among many relics, all clearly left by a capable group hidden from the world. But ancient cities exist also, ones covered previously, which were all once somehow cut from Earth's bedrock, that due to their location have fortunately been explored by a number of individuals over the years, never funded, but merely driven by curiosity. Thus, the true astonishing depth, and indeed the incredible achievement these once were, has all been previously documented. Civilizations that were once capable of not just digging these mines to incredible depths, but were, in fact, capable of creating entire temples from one gigantic solid stone, cut with such incredible artistic ability and accuracy, they are staggering examples of ancient engineering. In China and Japan, gigantic megaliths left, mysteriously abandoned, Easter Island, the unfinished obelisk Aswa, Egypt, Yangshan Quarry within China, all abandoned, with Yangshan possessing an almost detached megalith, clearly cut using incredible stone-cutting tools, a block estimated as weighing 16,000 tons when liberated from the bedrock. All these anomalies are but a few examples which support the premise of lost technology, knowledge, and an advanced civilization. It seems that the advanced minds, like those found in Tel Aviv, are but a tip of an archaeological iceberg in regards to the mystifying stone-cutting of a now lost antiquity. Why did humans placed within a lost chapter of antiquity exert such back-breaking effort in the attempt of extracting these precious metals? Who dug the Tel Aviv mines? Was it the same group who built ancient Peru? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.